okay. We're running? Yep. Okay, today we're going to be learning the structure, how to draw the structures in glycolysis. And our first four structures in glycolysis are going to be sugars. There are only two basic sugars you need to know for glycolysis. Glucose And I'm going to draw an alpha D glucose. That's why this OH is pointed down. And then we have our pattern of down, up, and down. And for this, you could use your right left chart, but I think for our purposes, in order for you to draw quickly, you should just remember that it's down for alpha D glucose, down, alpha, beta, and then just down, up, down. And this will be alpha D glucose. The only other structure you need to draw for glycolysis as far as sugars is alpha D fructose, which is a furanose sugar. So we're going to have our, our two flags. And instead of being down up in the middle, the fructose is going to have an OH up and an OH down. Remember, one, two, three, four, five, on our fifth carbon, we don't have an OH group at all. We have a hydrogen. Once you know these two basic sugars, we, we're able to start glycolysis. So let's go ahead and do that. Step one of glycolysis. Remember, we're using the mnemonic Gaffers, Chef, Buys, well, it's B U Y, mnemonic, Buys 832 peppers. And each of these letters in the mnemonic stands for something. The G in Gaffers is going to stand for the alpha D glucose. So let's go ahead and do step one of glycolysis. The G in GAFAS stands for alpha D glucose, so we'll go ahead and draw that. Here's our alpha on C1, and then here's our trick of down, up, and down. alpha D glucose. Now the A in GAFA, where are we? Stands for glucose. We've already done that step. Now we're going to do the next step, A, which always stands for add a phosphate group. Step one in glycolysis is one way, so I'm going to go ahead and put a one-way arrow on this step in, the, in uh, glycolysis. We're going to go ahead and redraw glucose, but this time on our flag, I'm going to put in a phosphate group. The rest of the molecule stays exactly the same. And now we're going to call it, since we put that phosphate group on C6, alpha D glucose 6 phosphate. Now, where did this phosphate come from? It came from ATP. All the phosphate groups in glycolysis are going to come from ATP, except, except for big step six, which we'll get to in a little while. So I'm going to go ahead and add an ATP, which is going to lose a phosphate to C6 and become ADP. Now, you'll also notice whenever you add a phosphate, you lose a hydrogen ion because that phosphate is coming in to replace the hydrogen on the C6. So here's our step one of glycolysis. Let's move on to step two. Fresh piece of paper. We've drawn glucose, and now we're, uh, we've done add a phosphate on C6, so we're up to drawing 
the fructose isomer of our fruct uh, glucose. So let's start by drawing what we left off on, which was glucose 6 phosphate. Here's our phosphate. We have alpha down, up, and down. Alpha D glucose 6 phosphate. This is a reversible reaction, so I'm going to go ahead and put a two way arrow in there. So for step two now, we're going to draw the isomer of glucose 6 phosphate which is fructose 6-phosphate. Here's our C6 in, in fructose. Now the molecule is an alpha, so we have this OH group going down on C2. And an easy way to remember the fructose compound is that while in glucose we have a down and an up, in our fructose molecule we have an up, and a down. And of course C5 in a pyranose, a furanose ring has a hydrogen, not an OH group. So here is alpha D fructose 6-phosphate, our two isomers. And we're not adding or removing any phosphate groups here so we don't have to worry about ATP. Here comes step three. In step three of glycolysis, we've drawn glucose, we've added a phosphate, we've drawn the fructose equivalent, and now again it's time to add another phosphate. So we're going to redraw where we left off. D fructose 6 phosphate. And now again this is uh, another step in glycolysis that's a one way because steps 1, 3, and 10 in glycolysis are one way. And we're going to add a phosphate now this time to C1. So let's redraw fructose 6 phosphate exactly the same way. CH2OP, but this time we're going to add a phosphate on C1. Everything stays the same, except now we've added this phosphate group on C1. And the name of our compound now is alpha D fructose 1 6 bis phosphate. The biz stands for two, which I think is just extraneous. We don't really need that. We already know from the name 1,6 that we have two phosphate groups, but this is the way that it's named. Now we added a phosphate. Where do we think the phosphate came from? Well, this is step three. It's not big step six. So we know that the ATP, the phosphate group, is going to come again from ATP. Once ATP loses a phosphate group, it's now ADP. And we know from previous experience that uh, once we, when we go to add a phosphate group, and first we have to lose a hydrogen. So that's going to also be one of the products that we get after we add ATP. So we've covered our first four structures in glycolysis. And they're not too, too bad because they're all sugars. Now we're going to move on to the rest of glycolysis, and then we're going to see that the, the rest are going to be three carbon compounds. Because what we're going to do is take our six carbon fructose, and we're going to cut it in two different places to split it. Because that's the step that we're up to.